A few weeks back, we had presented a video examining the reasons for the underperformance of the equity schemes of HDFC mutual fund. We went in depth to understand why that was the case, which stocks were underperforming and of course, the investing style of the fund management team. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll be sure to attach a link in the description below. Now that was underperformance and it's only fair that we go to the other end and do an in-depth report on a fund house that has been showing many years of overperformance. Hi everyone, my name is Shankar Nath and in this video, we shall seek to discover the secret sauce that makes the equity schemes of Axis Mutual Fund one of the best performing ones for the last many years. Let's get started. For the purpose of this study, we shall examine the workings of the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund. This fund manages over 22,000 crores of investor money and is not only the largest scheme for Axis Mutual Fund, but is the largest fund in the ELSS or tax saving category. The Axis Long-Term Equity Fund is a very successful fund. It has been around for more than 10 years and has delivered over 18% annual returns since inception. Remarkably, the fund's performance has been high and consistent and has been ranked within the top three performers in the ELSS category in six of the last 11 years. To put that into perspective, if you had invested 10,000 rupees on 1st of January 2010 in the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund, your corpus at the end of October 2020 would have been 53,300 rupees. The next best performing fund over this entire period is the Invesco India tax plan, which would have delivered a lot lower returns with an accumulation of just 38,300 rupees. That's a difference of 3.5% of returns every year for over 10 years, which is quite a bit. Okay, now that we are suitably impressed with the performance of the Axis long-term equity fund, let's turn our attention to why that is the case. Our research team has identified five extremely visible strategies that the Axis Mutual Fund team employs to deliver superior performance. Each of these five strategies support the growth style of investing that Axis prefers to employ and is something that everyday investors like you and me can use when managing our own portfolios. So let's dive in with the first of the five strategies. Most schemes of Axis Mutual Fund almost never have any public sector enterprises. This might be on account of corporate governance issues with these companies or their non-compliance with SEBI regulations or the mere allocation or misallocation of shareholder capital towards more social projects rather than building shareholder value. The flip side of this stance is that the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund misses out on many commodity plays in the mining, oil, gas, metal and refining sector as most companies in that space have heavy government shareholding. Nevertheless, this strategy has played out really well for the fund house over the last few years and stresses the importance of setting up boundaries within which you are most comfortable investing. More often than not, if a business is growing in the right direction, the stock price complements that growth and responds positively. Now the question is, what growth are we referring to? There are three primary growth metrics that our research has identified. First, growth in revenue, which explains if the company is progressing and capturing greater market share. The second one is growth in EBITDA or operating profits, which explains if the revenue or sales of the company are meaningful and are converting into earnings from operations. And the third growth metric is growth in earnings per share or EPS, which indicates if there is progress in the amount of profit that is being earned for every unit of ownership. So revenue, operating profits, and earnings per share. These are our growth metrics. In fact, there's a loosely defined word called compounders, which is used to describe such types of companies that exhibit consistent and steady growth, which happens on account of high quality operations, recurring revenue, and strong franchise. And that being said, let's map out these three growth metrics in the case of companies in the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund Portfolio. What we have here is the five-year annualized growth rate on the basis of revenue, EBITDA, and the earnings per share for each of the companies. 
If we take 10 percent growth as the benchmark, we see that anywhere from 17 to 19 companies are satisfying this criteria out of the 29 companies listed here. This means about 65 percent of the portfolio companies are compounders, which is much higher than the current 40 percent companies who fit the same criteria in the Nifty 100 index. This is a clear indicator that this fund management team finds better warmth in companies that grow their revenue, profits and profits per share. A lot like the companies we've been discussing, the ET Money YouTube channel also has a set of compounders. And these are our viewers, our subscribers and our commenters. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel or haven't commented to this video, kindly do so as it will certainly help us with the YouTube algorithm. The price earning ratio or the P ratio is one of the most commonly used valuation tools by everyday investors. Simply speaking, the P E ratio explains how much you need to pay for one rupee of profit, which means higher the P e ratio, more expensive, or if you choose to look at it differently, more valuable is that business to you. In another video, we had done an in-depth study on the P-E ratio and suggested multiple strategies an investor can use to improve portfolio returns and manage risk. I'll be sure to attach the link to that video in the description below. Our research shows that the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund does not shy away from picking up businesses which are available at a high P-E ratio. I mean, look at this data. Barring three companies, all remaining 26 companies have a P-E ratio of 20 and above. In fact, out of 26 companies, nine companies have a P-E ratio of over 50. And one of these companies, Avenue Supermarts, commands a P-E of 116. This means you have to currently pay 116 rupees for one rupee of profit. That's a lot, but is it? Let's understand this with something I picked up from a Monish Pabrai talk where he spoke about the PE of 1. The PE of 1 is a simple mathematical basis of understanding by when will the company's earnings per share match up to the price you pay per share. Let me explain this. Now Avenue Supermart has been growing its earnings per share at 40% per annum over the last 5 years. We picked up this data from the table featured in the compounder section. Now let's assume that this company is sorted and can grow at 40% for some more time. So if we start with 1 rupee of profits in year 0, by the end of year 1 the profit will grow by 40% to 1 rupee 40 paise. Then at the end of year 2 the profit will jump to 1 rupee 96 paise. Then 2 rupees 74 paise by year 3, so on and so forth. And it is in the 14th year that we will achieve a PE of 1 in the case of Avenue Supermarts. So figure this, what started as a PE of 116 is now down to a 14 year holding period by which this business can potentially give us a PE of 1. This is more or less a simplified version of how growth investing works and probably why funds who adopt this style of investing are not afraid to pay top dollar for high quality businesses. In addition to the P-E ratio, another quality metric that warrants your attention is the net profit margin. The average Indian company in the Nifty 500 has a net profit margin of 7-8%, to but the Axis long-term equity portfolio companies average a net profit margin of around 15%. The net profit margin is a strong determinant of quality and a great proxy for formidable companies with a recognizable brand name, a quality product and pricing power. And the final quality metric and perhaps the least discussed one is the free cash flow generated by the business. Free cash flow refers to the surplus cash generated by a business after paying off all operating and capital expenses. Let me explain the concept with a simple example. Say you own a furniture shop. So you bought some machines, employed some workers, got them the raw materials, the wood, the ply board, and you're able to sell the finished products at a monthly profit of 10,000 rupees. So that's a positive operating cash flow of 10,000 for your business. However, since wood cutting machines and tools tend to break or require frequent repairs, let's say this ends up in costing you 12,000 rupees every month to replace them. 
So technically your capital expenditure is swallowing your entire cash from operations and you end up with a negative cash flow of 2000 rupees. This is not a good business to be in because while you're making profits on paper, in reality, you're losing real money. So when our research team compiled the free cash flow data for the Axis Long-Term Equity Fund, it came as no surprise to find that the fund managers were heavily favoring businesses which have strong free cash flow. In fact, when we exclude the banking and finance companies from this list, we see that all but one company has positive free cash flow which speaks volume of the quality and sustainability of that business. Remember, businesses that generate high and consistent positive free cash flow can fund their organic growth from internal accruals instead of having to take loans or raise additional capital. This makes these businesses extremely valuable to an investor and often command expensive valuations in the stock market. The shareholders of the company are the owners of that business and it is the management team's responsibility to take the best decision on behalf of the shareholders. Shareholder value can be looked from two perspectives. The first is the quality of management which includes an understanding of the governance practices, past record of the senior management team, executive compensation, stock options and other policies drawn by the management from time to time. This is not something that can be ignored as there have been many, many instances where executives or promoters have destroyed crores of shareholder wealth by taking harmful decisions or indecisions which serve their needs more than that of the investors. The portfolio construct of the Axis Long Term Equity Fund shows that they earmark a high weightage to the quality of management team when choosing to invest in a business. The second part to shareholder value are the quantitative metrics around returns which explain the efficiency at which the business is generating returns for the shareholders. This is done by examining two key metrics, the return on equity and the return on capital employed. Return on equity or ROE is the amount of profit generated for every one unit of shareholders money. So if the ROE is on the higher side, then the business generates a lot more cash internally, which is great from a valuation standpoint. Return on capital employed or ROCE measures the efficiency with which a business uses its capital. The ROCE is measured using the EBITDA as a percentage of the total capital employed, which includes equity and debt. The information on the Axis long-term equity portfolio clearly shows that the fund management team has good warmth towards businesses with high return on equity and high return on capital employed. Almost 80% of the portfolio companies have sufficiently good ROE and ROCE values with Nestle India and TCS showing some outstanding numbers. To kind of put it together, high ROE and high ROCE are favorable indicators of performance and even the biggest investors in the world vouch for these metrics. The final part of our research is not metric driven but shows the importance of focus diversification. Unlike many other funds in the ELSS category, the Axis Long Term Equity Fund does not over diversify by investing in 50 or 60 companies. Our research shows that the fund averages just around 30 companies at any given time which provides sufficient diversification and risk management. This also means that the fund management team has a lot more conviction in these businesses. I mean, just look at this table. In 14 out of the 29 portfolio companies, that's half the number of companies, the Axis Long Term Equity Fund owns 1% or more of the shares of the company. And in the case of Torrent Power, TTK Prestige and Symphony Limited, this single fund owns over 4% of the outstanding shares in these companies. That's a lot of conviction. And when that's the case, it's fair to assume that there will be a lot more research and business understanding that the fund management team will partake before investing in any of these companies. While our research was geared towards an understanding of how the fund management team at Access Mutual Fund screens and selects companies, 
there's a lot we can learn from this exercise and deploy in our own investment portfolios. So let's recap what we have learned. In the first section, we understood the importance of setting boundaries. Access Mutual Fund does that by avoiding public sector companies. Other investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger did that for years by avoiding technology stocks and strictly restricting their universe to the sectors that they understand. In other words, define your circle of competence. In the second section of this video, we learned the science of identifying compounders with essential growth metrics around revenue, operating profits and earnings per share. Remember, growth metrics act as a strong valuation catalyst. The third section was on paying for quality, where we established the connection between the price of a share and the growth metrics using the PE of one rule with Avenue Supermarts. We also looked at the net profit margins and the importance of identifying free cash flow generating businesses, which in my opinion is more important than the more commonly used accounting profits. We then staked our claims as a shareholder in terms of investing in quality management that maximizes shareholder returns. And speaking about returns, our investing checklist gets a lot more juice with the introduction of return on equity and return on capital employed. The final lesson was not on watering down your portfolio with too many stocks and the importance of focusing more time on research and analysis. This reminds me of a Benjamin Graham quote where he said, if you are shopping for stocks, choose them the way you would buy groceries and not the way that you would buy a perfume. A very simple yet a very powerful lesson. We believe these points come very close to establishing how the Access Fund Management team is looking at companies, proof of which is available in their last decade of topping the performance charts. I hope you liked this video and will draw many learnings from the data and the insights presented. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another Insightful video. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.